Welcome to Crossroads Church. My name's Preston Smith, pastor of Student Ministries, and I wanted to say I'm glad, we're glad, that you've joined to worship with us today. Well, over the course of the next couple weeks, there's lots of things going on, even in a time where it feels like isolation. Over the course of the next few weeks, our staff has recorded some video devotionals that we wanna share with you to encourage you and meet you right where you're at. Regarding Easter Sunday, it's gonna be a Sunday like we've never planned, never thought about, but we have some ideas that we're still processing, so stay tuned on social media for what we're gonna do regarding that. Also, if you have any needs and you haven't reached out to our church yet, please do via social media call. We wanna meet those needs of our church family, so let us know, but let's pray. Dear God, I wanna thank you for this opportunity to worship today. God, I pray for this time as we engage in worship with a message and questions. I pray that you can encourage us. I pray that you can offer us comfort and peace, but I pray that we can grow as individuals, that we can be men, women, children, young adults, people after your heart. We love you, we thank you, and I pray for this time of worship, that you can continue to move even within our home. In your name, amen. Let's worship.
Welcome to Crossroads Church. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Even though we can't meet together in one big group, we are still the church. Gathered maybe in little home churches, but we're still going to grow in our walk with God and pursue Him and glorify Him with everything that we have. The purpose of Crossroads has not changed. It is to prayerfully introduce people to Jesus, grow them to be like Jesus, care for others, minister to others, and glorify God. And now, in the season, we have to figure out, we know how we used to do that, but how do we do it now? My hope is that our message today would encourage you as you walk through this challenging 
time and this challenging season, one of the most challenging times that our generations have ever seen. I'm glad you're here with us. And I hope this service is a blessing to you. Before I dive into the message, we're going to have a time for the giving of our tithes and offerings. If you're a guest at Crossroads, you're, you're not a normal Crossroads person, feel no obligation to, to give to our church. And if you have your own home church, I'd encourage you to give to them because this season is really difficult for churches financially. For instance, two weeks ago, we only received about two-thirds of our normal giving. Last week, only one-third of what our typical offerings are and, and what our budget is. And so that's really challenging. Now we have savings, but we don't want to have to dip into that if we don't have to. Those who have decided to give online and have reoccurring gifts, guess what? In this time, nothing's changed. Those That giving continues to come out week after week, and that's such a blessing to church. It's so, so helpful. And so I want to encourage you, if you haven't given online before, maybe this is a great season for you to do so. It's so helpful to the church as we you want to continue to do what we're doing. Please continue your giving to Crossroads or your home church in this season. You can give to Crossroads by, by texting in. There'll be a link. If you just text, they'll, we'll send you a link. It, the app, our, our Crossroads app, you can download our app. Just go to the App Store and, and search Crossroads Albert Lee and our app will come up. On our website, crossroadschurchmn.com, you can, there, there's a place to give there. You can set up reoccurring gifts and that's what Jess and I have done for the last six, seven years. And it just automatically comes out just like our electric bill and our gas bill and all those things. We just set it up and we make God a priority that we give to him first because he has given to us. He has blessed us, and we want to give back to our God. So would you join us in the giving and receiving of our tithes and offerings? Let me pray. God, I thank you that you're our provider, that you take care of us, even when we don't see how that's possible. God, there's, there's people right now who have lost their job. There's people who are worried they're going to get laid off and, and have no income. There's people who have money in the, the stock market and their retirement and they just see it dwindling by the day. God, I just pray that you give them all peace and help us to remember that you're our provider and you will take care of us through any and all, every season, Lord Jesus. God, we pray that for the churches, not only in our area, but all around the world, God, that you would take care of their needs. The pastors wouldn't worry or church secretaries or treasurers, God, but that we'd all have our confidence and trust in you. We thank you, Lord. God, I pray that you speak through the message today. You speak through your word, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I went to Quick Trip this week to get some gas, and I don't know if you guys know this, but since no one's traveling anywhere almost, Gas is like free. It's like so cheap, and there's no one filling up for gas. And so I went inside, and... I went to pay for my gas up to the counter and I had my little COVID-19 chit chat with the gas station attendant. I just said, hey, how are things going here? Are things crazy? And she's like, you would not believe it. People are hysteric. People are freaking out. She said, we have a limit on bread and eggs. Eggs, uh, bread, you can get five loaves and eggs, you can get two dozen eggs. It's like five loaves and two fish or something from the Bible maybe or something. I don't know. But she's like, there's a limit. And people, what they're doing is they're getting their two dozen eggs, going out to their car, changing their coat, and coming back in and getting more eggs. And I'm like, oh, oh my, I can't believe it. And, and so we kind of laughed and kind of shook our heads at that. It was just amazing how people are just going crazy and hysteric. And Quick Trip, from all I could see, is not short on eggs. I saw eggs everywhere. They had a lot of eggs there. So it's not like they're even running out, but people are just freaking out these days. And I was thinking, how many eggs does a guy need? <laughs> how many eggs do you even need? We've been shopping at Walmart a lot over the last couple weeks, trying to get what we can while, while it's there on the shelves. And so last Saturday, I went and got some big bags of cereal. Our kids eat these huge bags of cereal, 64 ounce, 72 ounces, like four plus pounds of cereal. 
and two days later, the thing's gone. I don't know how our kids do it. They're, they're like skin and bones, but they're just packing this food in. And so I had to go back to Walmart again this week to get a couple more things. And so I also got our kids' milk. Our kids, three of our four kids have a dairy allergy. And so we have to get a, a non-dairy milk. And I get two half gallons of their milk, a couple other things, a bag or two of cereal, go to the checkout. And I don't even have like a, a full-size shopping cart. I just have one of those small shopping carts. Go to self-checkout. And the lady who rung me up on last Saturday was manning the self-checkout. And on Saturday, I had a, my COVID-19 chit-chat with her and talk with her about her family and stuff like that. And so we had a, a good conversation then. And so as I started scanning my things at self-checkout, all of a sudden I saw her approach me. And I'm like, oh, she's going to say hi again and have a, another good little talk. But she didn't say hi to me. She was looking in my cart as I'm scanning things. And she reaches into my cart. And she grabs one of my milks and she says, we're limiting these to one. And she took it and she walked away. I'm like, you just stole my milk. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. And that wasn't even my milk. It was my kid's milk. It's like, this lady is stealing my kid's milk. It was in my cart. I already had it. And I was offended. I, couldn't, I could not believe it. And so I went out to my car. I'm loading the groceries in my vehicle. And the thought hits me. Here's what I need to do. I need to change my coat. I need to go back in the store. I need to go take my gallon of milk, right? <laughs> Luckily, I, I didn't do that. <laughs> but I did think about it. It's funny how just a few days earlier, I thought those people were crazy. And not too long after that, we're almost jumping in the deep end with them. It's a, it's a crazy time. And... I feel like I'm doing pretty good through this, that it's not affecting me, but then moments like this come. And I realize, man, this is hard. This, this is difficult. There, we are under stress and pressure and uncertainty. And it's hard on us all. But I want to encourage you, keep holding on. And God is going to walk with us through it. Man, my heart goes out to those of you who are sitting there and you struggle with anxiety. You're just struggling with the thoughts in your mind that, that are racing. And my prayer is that you would, with God's help, be able to take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ, as the scriptures say. They won't just allow your mind to go all the places that it's trying to go, but that you control your thoughts and that you hang on and dwell on the truth. We're going to go to the truth right now the truth of scripture, but let me give you some background of where we're at. We started this series last week on the birth of the church. Okay, we're doing church differently at Crossroads in this season, right? We had to start all over. Like, how do we do church? And so our staff said, let's go look at how the church began. And so we did that last week in Acts chapter 1. What, what happened? Acts, where does Acts come? Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John our, our biographies of the life of Jesus, they tell us about the life of Jesus. And the book of Acts was actually connected to Luke. It's a second part of the book of Luke, as Luke shares with us how the church began. Jesus, he came, he lived, he did all these miracles, he taught, he was arrested, crucified, he rose from the dead, he appeared to all kinds of people. And then Acts chapter 1, as his followers are there with him, he all of a sudden goes to be with the Father again. He's like, I, I gotta go. I'm leaving. And he ascends to be with the Father right before their eyes. And so his followers are just sitting there like, what do we do? What do we do? He was, he was here with us and now he's gone. What do we do when Jesus leaves? What do we do when he's crucified? What do we do when... He's arrested. What do we do when he comes back after he rises from the dead, uh, appears to us, meets with us, spends time with us, and then he leaves again? What do we do in, the light, of, in light of his resurrection? What do we do? Here's what they did. They went to a home 
just like you're in today. They went to a home. They gathered in an upstairs room. These people just with a lot of uncertainty said, we're just going to go gather together. Chapter 1, verse 14 of Acts it says this, they all met together and they were constantly united in prayer. They met together and they got together to pray. They constantly prayed and that's what the church does. That's what believers do. Believers don't panic, they pray. And prayer brought them together. And through prayer, God strengthened them and worked in them and through them. Acts chapter 2 is a really interesting passage of Scripture, very controversial. Many different churches take some of the things that happened and transpire to mean different things. We're going to come back to some of that controversy a couple weeks from now. The sermons to come, we're going to do the birth of the church last week, this week. We're going to take a pause. We're going to do Palm Sunday. Then we're going to do a special Easter service. And then we're going to come back to the birth of the church. And just a few weeks after Easter, we'll come back to this really intense stuff. So if I skip that, give me grace for that because we're going to come back. But just let me tell you what happens in in Acts chapter 2. The, the believers are, are together, and they're in Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, it's the time of the Passover, which is this religious festival where people from all over the world gather in Jerusalem. They make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for, for this time of worship. And so there's people from all different nations in Jerusalem. And as they're meeting together, all these people are together, and the believers are there, all of a sudden... This sound comes from heaven. It's a, it was a, described as a mighty windstorm. Imagine this, just rushing wind and a move of fire and fire comes upon this place and God's spirit comes down on these believers and they start speaking in different languages. And so they start uttering all these different words. If you've ever been in a room with somebody who's speaking different languages, like, okay, what are they talking about? It's so, so foreign. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Imagine a lot of different people speaking a lot of different languages at once. And it says in the scriptures that they were declaring the wonderful things God had done in all these different languages. And there's people from all different nations who these believers spoke about God in their own language, okay? Languages that they didn't know, they just, through God's Spirit, were speaking about what God had done. There were the people from the nations, here's some of the nations that were represented, the the Parthians, the Medes, the Eliamites, those from Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and Libya and Rome and the Cretans and Arabs are all there. People from all these different nations are there. And the believers, all different ones, are speaking about God in their language. Each one of those languages. And the people are amazed and they're perplexed. They can't believe, they're they're trying to figure out what is happening right now. What's going on? And some of those there, they made fun of the men who were speaking in the different languages. The believers who were speaking in the different languages. They said, hey, these guys are drunk. These guys are wasted. What are these guys doing? They're crazy. And now there's just some serious uncertainty. What what do the believers do? It's this crazy move of God. As God sends his Holy Spirit, like he said he would, he said, wait in Jerusalem because I'm going to leave and I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit and he will give you power. What do we do now? Because here comes the Holy Spirit and people are making fun of us. How do we respond? Here's the scripture. If you have your Bible, 
or you have an app, the Bible app on your phone, open up to Acts, Acts, A-C-T-S, Acts chapter 2. It's right after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts chapter 2, verse 14, it says this. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. And he quotes the Old Testament in Joel chapter 2. He says this. He says, In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in heavens above and signs on earth below. Blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter continues, people of Israel, verse 22, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus, the Nazarene, by doing powerful miracles, wonders, signs through him. As you know, you guys saw it. You guys saw what he did. But God knew what would happen. God knew what would happen. And his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of the lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to the cross, to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. Jumping down to verse 32. God raised Jesus from the dead, Peter says. And we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see in here today. Verse 36, So, let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Man, what do we do in uncertainty? Those moments of uncertainty. What do we do? I was watching a a video clip this week where this store clerk at a convenience store got robbed. Okay, it was probably on one of those shows like World's Most Dangerous or World's Craziest, you know, you know those kind of shows. And most people, if they get robbed, their mom has taught them if someone wants your wallet, you just give it to them. You don't fight them. You, You live to see another day, right? But I guess this clerk, his mom maybe didn't teach him that. And so the robber gets behind the counter and starts cleaning out the register, just taking all the money out of the register. And the clerk goes and grabs some sort of big stick. And he comes at the robber. He comes at him. And he starts just beating the robber with the stick, taking swings like he's Fred McGriff on this guy, just wailing on him and wailing on him. And the robber is trying to block the blows and he's trying to escape and he's frazzled. He's like, what is this guy doing? And so he tries to exit the convenience store, but the clerk locked the doors of the convenience store so the robber couldn't leave. And so the robber, as the clerk's behind him, just wailing on him, comes back in and comes at the clerk and they fight and they tussle and and finally the robber gets away from the clerk and the clerk gets kind of shoved away the robber scrambles and makes it outside the door and then all of a sudden back in the camera shot here comes the clerk he's got a stick in hand again going out running chasing him into the parking lot taking swings on him again like it's the home run derby. It was unbelievable. It's like, man, this guy is relentless, just giving full blows on this guy. You know, in chaotic, crazy, out-of-control circumstances, people have different reactions. Some of the main reactions that, that we label are these. Fight, 
fight like this clerk. He goes and he fights. Flight is to run away or, or freeze. And some people in this situation, a situation like this, they just freeze and maybe even wet their pants. Others would run for their lives out of the back door of the convenience store. But then there's those few who instead of running, instead of freezing, they go grab a big stick. <laughs> but situations call for different responses. What do the believers do? What do believers do? What do they do when Jesus leaves? What do they do when it's just them? You know what they did? They got up to a room. They gathered together. And they prayed. Man. Man, if you did this in this time, in this season, your life would be changed. And so would the lives of those around. You know what else they did? They got among the people. They saw the work that God was doing. And someone stepped forward. Someone. That someone, his name was Peter. Peter. It, Peter was not his birth name, actually. I don't know if there's anyone out listening whose name is Peter. Peter. It's an important name. Peter's birth name was Simon. But someone changed his name later in his life. And that someone was Jesus. See, there was a day when Jesus asked the disciples, Hey, who, who do people say that I am? And there's many rumors going around of who Jesus was. But Jesus said, no, who, how about you? Who do you say that I am? Peter said, you're the Messiah. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus turned to Simon. He said, Simon, you're right. And I'm going to change your name. You're, you're no longer going to be known as Simon. You are going to be known as Peter, which Peter, you know what Peter means? It means rock. It means rock. He said, on this rock, I will build my church, and there's nothing, nothing that's going to stop it. And on that day, when everyone was wondering, when everyone was questioning, when chaos was ensuing, Peter stood up before the crowd and silenced them. Huge groups of people. He quieted the crowd and he spoke the truth. He was the rock. And they needed a rock. They needed someone to step forward and point people to the truth. And Peter was, did just that. I sometimes wonder if his first line was, Do you smell what the rock was cooking? <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, anybody, some of you guys are wrestling fans. I'm not a wrestling fan, but I know that some people will appreciate that. He was the rock. He was the Chevy. Like a rock. Sorry, you Dodge and Ford owners. <laughs> And maybe you know what else he was? He was a rock star. He was a rock star. Maybe not in the eyes of all the people, but definitely in the eyes of his Heavenly Father. Because that was his moment. That was his moment to shine. To step forward and point people to the truth. Here, here's what would happen. He, he said, he pointed people back to the scriptures. He said God is doing exactly what he said he would do. He said in the Old Testament, in Joel, he said that he was going to send his Holy Spirit. He said that just before he left. Remember, <laughs> Acts chapter 1. He said, you're going to receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And he pointed people to the truth. And he said, remember Jesus. 
Remember Jesus. Remember what he did and who he was. He said, you killed Jesus, but God rose him from the dead, and death could not keep its grip on him. And because Jesus laid down his life, everyone who calls on his name will be saved. And there is no better message in the world than that. That through Jesus, every single person can be saved. And through Jesus alone. Verse 37 says this. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? They heard the truth. They, they, they heard about Jesus and what he did. And they said, well, in light of this, what should we do? And Peter didn't say, oh, just be yourselves. Oh, just, you're okay the way you are. Just do whatever you want. Do whatever feels good to you. He didn't say that. He says, here's what you people need to do. Verse 38, each of you must repent of your sins. Repent. Turn away from your sin. And turn to God because all of us are sinners, aren't we? Every single one of us was born a sinner. And all of us need a Savior. He says, repent of your sins, turn away from your sins, and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Receive Jesus' forgiveness. Then you receive the gift of the Spirit, the Spirit that you saw poured out. Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to leave, and I'm going to send you the Counselor, the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from, from, from the dead can reside in you. All you have to do is repent and believe. Verse 39, this, this, is, this promise is to you and to your children and to those far away. All who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time. He was a long-winded preacher, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. And Peter preached the same message in chapter 2. And in chapter 3, and in chapter 4, he finds himself in jail for telling people about Jesus. And he shares that same message to those who arrested him. And they, they warn him, you've got to stop, Peter. You can't keep spreading this. You're offending people. This is upsetting the apple cart. No more. But he said, we cannot stop telling about everything that we have seen and heard. I can't stop telling him about Jesus because he is everything. He's everything. And they threatened him and then released him. And he continued to preach the message that, there, that salvation, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Wow, how cool. Peter, just a normal guy who in this crazy circumstance, this chaotic moment, stepped forward and was the rock, was the Dwayne Johnson, was the Chevy, was the rock star. He was the rock. I wonder what situation you're in today. What situation are you in? We know everything that's going on kind of worldwide, nationwide, in our states. But God has you in a specific situation in this season. And how are you going to respond? You know, we can't change the circumstances that happen around us. But we can change how we respond. And what's God calling us to do? Who's he calling us to be? And will we step into that moment? It's not always fight, flight, or freeze. We don't have to pick up a big stick. Sometimes we just need to take a stand. Sometimes we just need to speak the truth in love. Sometimes we just need to point people to Jesus, the answer for everything. Sometimes we need to guide Sometimes we need to de-escalate. Sometimes we need to pass on the grace and love that's been poured out on us in this critical time. 
as the history books are being written, are you going to step forward when God brings that moment before you? There's people in our church who are rock stars, right? Right in this season. Absolute rock stars. There's someone from our church who decided, hey, you know what would be important? To call everyone in our church and just see how they're doing and pray for them. And so he set up a, a group of 40 people who were trying to call every single phone number that we have in our database. And I believe they've finished going through one round of phone calls. And if you haven't been called, someone hasn't left a message for you, maybe we don't have your number on file. Email the church, and I think I can promise this. I'll do everything in my power to make sure that you get a phone call. Because this one individual wanted to care for the people in our church. There's another person from our church who's posting devotions online every day. How cool is that? There's moms gathering online to support one another, sending each other videos and sharing what they're going through right now. There's one person from our church who is on that, that, that call team making phone calls. And she called this elderly couple that she, I, I'm not sure if she knew them or not, maybe had some distant connection with them. But she called them up. And this elderly couple actually haven't been attending our church for a period of time now. They, they used to come and bring their, their grandson, but they, they've been away for a while. But this lady called and she said, hey, this is so-and-so from Crossroads Church and I'm just calling to check in and see how you're doing and seeing if there's anything I can do to help or any way that we can pray for you. And this elderly couple hadn't heard from anyone. They'd been hunkered down and closed off from everyone, just trying to take care of themselves and their health and They said, you know what? You know what we need? We just need a dozen eggs. We just need a dozen eggs. That's all we need. And the lady who called them from our church said, I can get you a dozen eggs. And she brought them a dozen eggs. And she prayed for them. And they even gave them more than a dozen eggs. Other gift, too. But they were that family who stepped forward and said, I, I'll make phone calls. I'll bring some eggs. I'll pray. Man, they were the rock. My wife went back to Walmart yesterday to get another half gallon of milk. <laughs> and she was in the, the checkout. And there was another older lady with her there. And she didn't know this lady. And all of a sudden, as they're waiting in the checkout, two men start fighting over toilet paper, literally. I don't think they were throwing punches, but they were shouting at each other. And my wife and this, uh, this elderly lady could not believe it. They were shocked and appalled what was going on. And they said a couple words to each other, my wife and this elderly lady. And the... Older lady, she got, got checked out and was just standing there waiting. And she was waiting, waiting, and my wife said, Hey, what are you, what are you waiting so long for? And the lady said, Hey, I, my back's really bad, and I, I broke my wrist, and I can't carry my groceries out to my car, so I'm waiting for someone to help me. And my wife's like, Hey, I, I'd be willing to take your groceries out to your car. And my wife has a, a, a cart full of groceries, it's downpouring outside. And so my wife takes her groceries, follows the lady with her groceries out to her car, and loads this lady's groceries for her in the pouring rain. <laughs> when Jess got home, our groceries were just soaking wet. <laughs> and in the rain, Jess, this lady was so thankful, and they got in conversation, and all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, do you go to church? And she's like, yeah, I go to Crossroads Church. And Jess's like, oh, my, my husband works at Crossroads Church. She's a pastor there. And she's like, are you serious? Yeah, my, my husband's Jeff. Oh, really? He did my husband's funeral a couple years ago. 
and he did a great job and, and they were just talking more and Jess is like, hey, can I pray for you? And so in the parking lot of Walmart, two ladies from Crossroads are praying as they're getting rained. Jess told me, she's like, I was the one that was supposed to go to Walmart, but Jess is like, I want to get out of the house. And she came back and said, that's the reason I went to Walmart. It's because there is someone for her to bless. And there's someone for you to bless. Maybe it's one person, maybe it's a family, maybe it's a neighborhood, maybe it's your, your workplace. I don't know who it is, but will you stand up and will you be the rock? In the craziness. Will you point people to Jesus and pour on them love and grace and not panic but pray? How did the church start? The church started with prayer. And the church started with people who are willing to take a stand for the truth, the love, and the message of Jesus. That's my hope for all of us. That we don't waste this opportunity, but we are rock stars. Let me pray. God, we thank you that you are good and you are great, Lord Jesus, that you carry us through. God, there's no other way for men to be saved but through Jesus Christ. And if there are people listening that need to repent and receive Jesus, I pray that they would do that, that they would just say, hey, God, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Would you forgive me of my sins and make me clean? That I could have a new start. I could live for you and trust you, God. Pray for those people who are struggling with their thoughts and mind, that you would comfort them and encourage them and give them peace. And God, help us to be a blessing to our world to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors, to our coworkers, to the people in line at the store, to everyone. We thank you, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Man, I, ha I hope you have a great week. I'm sorry that, that things are so challenging, so different, but what an opportunity that we have.